the Fat Controller scolded both engines severely. There must be no more tricks, he said. I shall be watching you both. I have to decide which of you is to stay. He strode away. The twins looked glum. Neither wanted to stay without the other. They said so. Then what's to do? wondered Douglas. Oh, said Donald. Each one be as good as the other. Then he'll have to keep us both. Their plan was good. But they reckoned without a spiteful brake van. The van had taken a dislike to Douglas. Things always went wrong when he had to take it out. Trains were late, and he was blamed. Douglas began to worry. You're a muckle nuisance, said Donald one day. It's to leave ye behind, I'd be wanting. You can't, said the van. I'm essential. Och, are ye? Donald burst out. You're nothing but a screeching and a noise when all's said and done. Spite Dougie, would ye? Take that! Ow, ow, ow! cried the van. Could you wished? said Donald severely. There's more coming if you misbehave. The van behaved better after that. Douglas's trains were punctual and the twins felt happier. Then Donald had an accident. He backed into a siding. The rails were slippery. He couldn't stop in time. One moment, the signalman was standing on the stairs. The next, he was sitting on the coal in Donald's tender. He was most annoyed. You clumsy, great engine, No, you must stay there. You damn my points. It served you right for spoiling my nice new signal box. The fat controller was cross too. I am disappointed, Donald, he said. I did not expect such, such clumsiness from you. I have decided to send Douglas back and keep you. I'm sorry, sir. But Donald didn't say what he was sorry for. We know, don't we? I should think so, too, went on the fat controller indignantly. You have upset my arrangements. It is most inconvenient. Now James will have to help with the goods work while you have your tender mended. James won't like that. The fat controller was right. James grumbled dreadfully. Anyone would think, said Douglas, that Donald had his accident on purpose. I heard tell, he went on, about an engine and some tar wagons. Gordon and Henry chuckled. Shut up said James. It's not funny. Well, 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 said Douglas innocently. Surely, James, it wasn't a He It didn't say. James didn't say. He was salty the next morning and wouldn't steam properly. When at last he did start, he thought the trucks hard. He's cross, <laughs> sniggered the spiteful brake van. We'll try to make him crosser still. Hold back, whispered the van to the trucks. Hold back giggled the trucks to each other. Luckily, Douglas was there. Help me up the hill, please, panted James. These trucks are playing tricks. We'll show them, said Douglas grimly. Come on, come on, come on, puffed James crossly. Get moving, you, get moving, you, puffed Douglas from behind.
slowly but surely the snorting engines forced the unwilling trucks up the hill. But James was losing steam. I can't do it! I can't do it! He panted. Leave it to me! Leave it to me! shouted Douglas. He pushed and he puffed so furiously that sparks leapt from his funnel. You there, groaned the man. I wish I'd never thought of this. It was squeezed between Douglas and the trucks. Go on, go on, it screamed. But they took no notice. The guard was anxious. Go steady, he yelled to Douglas. The van's breaking. It was too late. The guard jumped as the van collapsed. He landed safely on the side of the line. I might have known it would be Douglas. I'm sorry, sir. Maybe I was clumsy, but I wouldn't have been beaten by yon tricksy van. I see, said the fat controller. Edward brought workmen to clear the mess. Douglas was grand, sir, he said. James had no steam left, but Douglas worked hard enough for three. I heard him from my yard. Two would have been enough, said the fat controller dryly. I want to be fair, Douglas, he went on. I admire your determination, but I don't know. I really don't know. He turned and walked thoughtfully away.